Well, first of all, um, credit Ole Miss. Uh, they were on a three-game losing streak. And at the end of the day, they were able to get a second-half lead um, with the areas of points in the paint. They shot 30 free throws in the second half. 22 of those were from points, and uh, they were three for four from the three. And that kind of negated uh, our momentum. Uh, it's hard and difficult, uh, especially the first eight points or the first four calls to get them to the free throw line. But we knew coming out of halftime what, what was going to happen uh, because they shot zero free throws in the first half. Uh, we just couldn't negate uh, and not foul in those situations. Uh, our guys did get to the foul line, which is credit uh, to our aggression. Uh, we did have a positive assist to turnover ratio, uh, but we had some costly turnovers that led to five of their points. Uh, but I, I, I'm proud of our team. We held the lead for 19 minutes and 16 seconds to their 17 minutes and 59 seconds. And, you know, sometimes the ball bounces a certain way. And in that second half, the ball bounced a certain way and we weren't able to get those loose balls. And again, I credit Ole Miss and Coach Beard and his program. The first half and then second half, they started attacking the paint a little bit more. What kind of adjustments did y'all have to make defensively to kind of counteract that? Well, at the end of the day, at halftime, they shot zero free throws at, in the game. So we knew because they had 17 of probably of half of their field goals uh, were from three and they kind of settled that that the aggressiveness had to come out. And that's when they were able to just duck their heads, get to the foul line and get to the basket. It wasn't nothing that we did wrong. Uh, they made contested shots and obviously came away with foul shots. I thought our guys forced some turnovers in there and did a great job. But ultimately, those couple loose balls that we didn't get, uh, they ended up getting. Coach, what do you think it was that uh, that changed during that 19-point swing that Ole Miss had in the second half from y'all being up 10 to them leading by nine? They scored when the clock was stopped on the free throw line. Uh, in a half, 20 minutes of play, they shot a free throw. They shot 30 of them. So that's the difference, 30 free throws in 20 minutes. I mean, that's a free throw every 30 seconds. 40. Yeah, every 40 seconds. So you can't You can't defeat that. So I credit them for getting to the foul line. Coach, what do you kind of think that you got? You all need to do to kind of, you know, prevent teams from getting to the free throw line that much? I need to have a whistle and not call the fouls. That's what I think is the best, best remedy for it. They drew fouls. I can't, I can't predict that. That's a referee's discretion on what they think is a foul or not. Uh, I thought Bates did come away with several aggressive plays to the basket that he did not get foul calls on. I do know that. A guy that averages 20 points a game, close to, um, in, in play, he he was aggressive in the basket, no different than the other plays, and he just didn't come away with the whistle. Uh, but I thought our guys did a good job ignoring uh, and playing through a road crowd, which was a great crowd. The adversity, um, they did a great job facing that. And, you know, I, again, they made tough shots. They got to the foul line and points in the paint. That's the game in the second half. Uh, the second half, we were able to get to the free throw line 19 times. And it was a physical game. I thought Ole Miss decided to stop shooting jump shots, duck their head and play physical. And we were doing the same thing, ducking our heads and playing physical. We only shot 11 threes, guys. 11 threes, only eight turnovers. So at the end of the day, we knew what we needed to do, and that's attack the paint. We ended up with 30 points in the paint. They ended up with 20, okay? 16 of their points in the paint came in the second half. So at the end of the day, I just thought with the momentum we had, our guys did a tremendous job following our game plan. And sometimes, the you know, the cars are dealt the way they are dealt. Yeah, Sean, um, coach just mentioned, you know, y'all had a, a pretty low amount of three point attempts. Was that was kind of attacking more of the interior part of the game plan or was it more just what Ole Miss was giving you defensively tonight? Um, I would just say a little bit of both. Um, I mean, we we don't I mean, we haven't been shooting as good from the three uh, lately. So we've just been practicing on, you know, getting downhill, driving, playing physical. So 
but they also was giving us the paint. They was closing out on us pretty hard. They know we got a few shooters. Tamar Bates, uh, Nick Honor shooting it well, and also Noah Carter. So, but I mean, we was just attacking downhill and trying to get fouls, and uh, I think we did a good job of that. Uh, we just, you know, came up a little bit short. What a what a great game by Jordan Butler. Uh, I thought we saw him grow up today. Uh, he did a tremendous job. He played twenty seven minutes. That I think that's a season high for him, possibly. Uh, but he came away with 10 points and four rebounds. And I thought he physically had Ole Miss change their game plan by playing without two former all-defensive centers and shot blockers. And when you're able to do that as a freshman and make a team go small, uh, that's a tremendous, tremendous uh, deal. And Aiden Shaw as well. Aiden Shaw had 10 points, five rebounds. Those two guys did an unbelievable job tonight. And instead of focusing on – other negative things, I would like to focus on those two two guys, their performances, because for us to be able to be in this game, we wouldn't be in this game without those two. Uh, Sean East, it was great to see him back, but trust me, we would not be in this game without the performance of both Jordan Butler and Aiden Shaw. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you, guys. M-I-Z.